All right, welcome to framework number eight. Um, this one here is going to be on, you know, financial statements. Okay, uh, from the previous, from framework number seven, uh, we had our trial balance. And on our trial balance, as we learned, it's nothing more than a listing of the general ledger accounts and the balances in those accounts. Now, again, I'm just going over a high level here. Um, I'm not getting down into in depth. I mean, I had mentioned that there's an unadjusted trial balance, a, an adjusted trial balance, a post-closing trial balance. Um, uh, one of the things that I forgot to mention is, is that you can create trial balances of your accounts receivable accounts, your subsidiary ledger, your accounts payable. Uh, you know, basically it's the concepts that you're getting down. Remember, in all of this, it's understanding the concepts and the application of them. It is not about memorization, all right? There's just too much to memorize, and the reason why you have a concept is because that concept is applied over, can be applied over many, many different uh, uh, I, uh, situations or circumstances. So you're not going to be able to memorize all the possibilities, all right? So that's why it's better to understand concepts and and uh, apply it to whatever you're doing. And in the case of the trial balance, you know, um, I in the last lesson I had said. You know, it's as of a specific date, and that date could be any day, right? It could be November 13th, it could be whatever, okay? Um, if you wanted to go back in time, you could go back to, you know, January 3rd. Uh, um, you know, it's, and what will happen is if you're using a computer system, it'll only look at it, all of the information up to January 3rd, okay? Anything between January 3rd and November 30th will not be considered on that trial balance, okay? Um, but if you're doing, you know, obviously you're not going to go back that often. And if you're doing things by hand, you're generally going to create trial balances as of the date that you're working from. Okay. Um, now, what do we do with this information? Okay. Well, when we're at the end of the accounting period and we're closing out our, uh, the period, we're going to create financial statements. And if you remember, um, from the first, uh, uh, the first framework I had talked about journal entries and then that goes into they get posted to the general ledger accounts and then we create our financial statements okay and if you recall I had said um, the two that always get created for all businesses are the balance sheet and an income statement And you'll also recall that I had said that you might see uh, more commonly used ones. The next one would be a statement of retained earnings. Uh, a statement of cash flows. Um, for those who are in the bookkeeping program, um, you will not see cash flows. Um, uh, you might see the retained earnings, but anybody who's in uh, any of the financial accounting subjects, you'll definitely see both of those. I mean, they have whole chapters just specifically on cash flows in financial accounting. Okay, but um, for all intents and purposes, we're not going to look at these. We're going to stick to the balance sheet and the income statement and also realize that uh, you can create as many different types of financial statements as you need when you get into cost accounting. Uh, you know, and you're in a manufacturing concern, if you have different departments, you're going to create uh, different cost of production summaries for each department. So if you have five departments, you know, you can, and, you know, there's an additional five statements. And then, of course, there's all kinds of other statements. So, uh, you know, you can create an awful lot of statements that are all customized to that particular business. But each and every business has a balance sheet and an income statement, okay? So what does a, a balance sheet look like? Well, before I go there, I want you to realize that um, on the trial balance here, okay, we have our accounts and notice that they're numbered, okay? Um, all of the asset accounts begin with the number one. Okay, notice 100, 107, 110 for accounts receivable, all right? Um, and they go all the way down to here, all right? So these are all of your asset accounts. 
um, all of your liability counts begin with the number two. Okay, uh, the numbering scheme can be very very varied. Um, and, you know, I've seen where uh, they've used seven digits, a dash, and then five more digits uh, when I was um, in one of the businesses that I had consulted with. Um, but all of your all of those asset accounts, even though it was seven digits dash five digits, they began with a number one. All of the liabilities begin began with a number two. Your equity accounts, right, begin with a number three. Your revenue accounts begin with a number four, and all of your expenses begin with a number five. Okay, now on the balance sheet, all right. Let's go to a balance sheet. On the balance sheet, what we what we put on a balance sheet are the accounts that are all of our assets, all of our liabilities, and all of our equity. Okay. On the income statement, let me just drop down to the income statement. On the income statement, we put all of our revenues and all of our expenses. Okay. Now, this here um, balance sheet and this income statement are from the uh, our bookkeeping course and uh, you know there are some idiosyncrasies notice that the date here is september 30th whereas up on my trial balance it was as of november 30th okay um, that's because in the bookkeeping course the balance sheet and the income statement were only examples of what the balance sheet and income statement should look like this here trial balance was as of November 31st and the beginning the next accounting period beginning 12 1 December 1st they were using this trial balance as the beginning balances for that accounting period for December and the accounting period is were one month long okay but because of the situation in the bookkeeping project um, they were short a bookkeeper for uh, uh, someone left and they hadn't created financial statements last time they had created financial statements was September 30th so this was just an example that they had to work from so um, just realize that uh, you know when you're looking at this you know you're going to be creating the information from the trial balance that coincides with that specific uh, you know accounting period now on a balance sheet it's always as of a specific date so just like the trial balance, if I had a trial balance that was dated November 13th, I can create a balance sheet as of November 13th. Okay, and the reason for that is is because our asset accounts, our liability accounts, and our equity accounts. Right now, notice that's the accounting equation: assets equals liabilities plus owner's equity. Okay, um, these are called permanent accounts. They always have a running balance you're never closing these out to zero because we're looking at this information since the beginning of the business started however long that was ago for this particular balance sheet that was November, September 30th this business might have been in business one month one year ten years a hundred years you don't know and, well you do know if you're in the business but what matters is, is that it's the information as of this particular date since the beginning be, since the business began however long that was Okay, so all you're really doing is you're taking the information from the trial balance. You're taking all of these here figures from the trial balance, right? And you're putting it on your balance sheet. Same with your liabilities and same with your equity. You're taking them from the trial balance, all of that information, and you're putting it on the balance sheet. Now notice here on this trial balance, this is a post-closing trial balance. And the reason why is notice that our our revenue accounts and our expense accounts here all have zero balances okay and the reason for that is is because revenues and expenses which go on our income statement right revenues less expenses gives you your profit or loss okay um, when you're looking at the income statement, what we're doing is, is we're looking at the operations of the business for a period of time. Okay, so even though we're taking the information from September 30th, well, in this case, September 30th, from our trial balance, it's only for that particular accounting period. 
So what we're doing is, is we're looking at that information, okay? We're putting it on our, uh, we're taking it from the trial balance, we're creating our income statement, but uh, this here information then has to be closed out um, to our equity accounts. And I'll show you that in, in a future framework. Um, but all of this information gets closed out and it gets zeroed out in order for you to start the next accounting period fresh because all we're doing with the income statement is, is we're looking at the operation of the business for that particular period of time whereas with the balance sheet we're looking at the financial position of the company since it started uh, since the, the business began okay um, so with that said you know um, that's pretty much it for the these two financial statements but one thing that I do want uh, to, to point out here is, you know, when it comes to creating ledger accounts, and this is a, a perfect example of it, you know, in reality, um, you can have just one revenue account, okay? And you can have one expense account, okay? Which would give you a profit and loss. Now, anytime you would make a sale, you would put it in that one revenue account. And anytime you you were going to pay something out for an expense, you would put it in an expense account, and yeah, you would end up with this profit or loss down here of $16,309, okay? But that doesn't allow for analysis of your business. It doesn't allow for anal analysis of your financial uh, information. So what happens is you create additional, uh, additional accounts are created for the business to be able to do that uh, financial analysis that's specific to their business, right? So that's why we have more than one revenue account. We have more than one expense account. You know, I don't want to know that my total, you know, if I said my total expenses were 26,000, roughly 26,000, um, you know, I have no idea what, what, you know, how that was broken down. But when I create the additional accounts, right? Now I know my rent expense was a thousand dollars, and now when I look at my utility expense, which is three seventeen, you know that might have been five different utility bills that came up to three hundred seventeen. And now I can analyze to see, okay, is my payroll expense too much? Uh, am I spending too much on advertising? You know, sixteen thousand dollars out of that twenty six is, you know, half of your you know, half of your expenses went to advertising. Okay, is that too much? All right. Um, and the same thing with your your sales. We create, you know, we have returns and allowances. We have we want to know what our gross profit is. In other words, when I sell a product, I want to know how much I made on that profit on that product before I took out any of these additional expenses. So I'm just pointing this out in that you have to you know keep the framework of these financial statements in mind. Okay. Um, yeah, I could have just had one revenue account, one expense account. But as I add accounts, it allows me to do uh, a little bit more analysis. And it's the same thing with our balance sheet, okay? Um, you know, here they have vehicles and equipment and office furniture and equipment, okay? Well, those are, uh, you know, as you can see, you know, anytime I had a vehicle, I would put it in a vehicle account and equipment. I'd put it in the equipment account, office furniture and equipment. But I could have just put capital asset, one account and lumped all into that one account. Well, that wouldn't tell me anything. I would have no clue as to what the makeup of that capital asset account is. So it, it ends up getting broken out um, into you know different uh, general ledger accounts. And that's the reason why we create the ledger accounts. But also notice here that um, on the balance sheet, you know, assets equals liability plus owner's equity. If your debits equal your credits, on your trial balance, there's no reason why your assets shouldn't equal your liabilities plus owner's equity. Again, it's nothing more than transferring information, okay? And if if your debits are equal your credits, then everything will fall in line. But um, that's when it doesn't fall in line, okay? Well, that's for a, a future video in this framework, all right? So for right now, um, I'm kind of done with this, and what I'll be moving on to next, um, I believe I'm going to talk, uh, go back, um, give a, a another take, another look at um, an, an, a, the entire view of the accounting process from a different perspective. 
and then from that um, I'm going to actually start talking about making how to make journal entries when you don't know how to make them and then also I plan to make a framework on uh, how to find errors when you you know when you've made them and you can't seem to find them okay so the next one will be more along the lines of a, an entire framework uh, of accounting okay